to Drupal versus WordPress. So before we get started, uh, I just want to say real quick that this is a little bit of a, I mean, it's a, it's a panel. Uh, it's a panel of myself, Tessa, and all of you. Uh, we're going to ask for your feedback and invite you to contribute as well. Um, also, before we get started, uh, let's just do a quick hand poll. Who here considers Drupal to be their primary, like, that is my CMS. That's, that's where I go if I'm going to build a website. Okay, not surprising. Uh, how many people would say that of WordPress? Yay, more than okay. I thought. Yeah, nice. Uh, how many are something else entirely or nothing? All right, cool. fair enough. Yeah. Uh, and then in regards to like what you do on a, on a daily basis, like, you know, whether it's Drupal or WordPress or whatever, uh, how many people here would say that you are a, a developer, a web developer of some sort? Okay, how about a project manager? How about just a decision maker, CEO, calling the shots? <laughs> okay, fair enough, cool. Yeah, that, that helps us kind of get an understanding of who you are, maybe maybe why you're here, maybe not, I don't know, we'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so just to, to prefix, we are going to ask for your opinions. Uh, there's three rules with that. First rule is, is don't be a jerk. We know that mainly you are all into Drupal, so please be kind to me and be honest in your votes. Uh, oh, we, we haven't explained that. So, so yeah. for each section that we go through, uh, we're go we didn't get sticky notes, that's too bad, but yeah. we're, we're, we're going to ask for you to kind of quickly just do a quick like hand poll. If you feel like Drupal or WordPress clearly wins in any particular sec you know, section that we're going through, like it's way better, uh, then we'll ask you to vote for that and then we'll put it up on the board and at the end we'll see who wins. Um, yes. So in that regard, don't don't vote for just what? Drupal because you're. Uh, well, I was gonna buy boxing gloves this morning, yeah. and I decided to sleep in instead. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, the other two rules, I think, really kind of only one really kind of encapsulates it. Like, only vote if you feel really passionate about it. We want this to kind of actually come out as honest as possible. Um, so if you're kind of like, nah, it could go either way, just vote only if you feel very strongly one way or the other. Cool. Uh, my name is David Needham. I'm an agency and community training manager at Pantheon. That means I get to come to cool conferences like this and speak. Uh, I also get to create some curriculum, help run our training team. Um, I have a longer history with Drupal. Uh, technically, I built a WordPress website first, but it was just a pretty simple blog a long time ago. Uh, I started with Pantheon. Uh, Pantheon. I started with Drupal uh, about 10 years ago, almost. Uh, I was in college, and uh, I was in this advanced web design course where we started off the semester by learning PHP, uh, MySQL, uh, a few other things, and we, we basically started by creating a dynamic website and creating our own CMS from scratch. Halfway through the semester, uh, the instructor said, okay, now that you guys know why you should never ever create your CMS, uh, CMS yourself, uh, we're going to use an established CMS. So pick whatever CMS you want, and we're all going to build a website for a, a uh, the same fake company using the same business name, and then at the end we'll all look at each other's websites uh, and like do a Google search and see what rankings are uh, for like who did best at SEO and, and stuff like that. So um, I chose Drupal. I was friends with my professor. He's, his name is actually Stephen Murrell. He used to work for Phase Two many years ago, but um, he he was my mentor. He helped me kind of get through all the the Drupal stuff. Everyone else in the class chose WordPress. Um, I don't know. Uh, it, it worked out pretty well. Uh, I used and I, I, I learned all about Ubercard at the time, so I had a fully functioning e-commerce website to work with. I was selling hoverboards uh, for a website called a company called Paramodal. Um, I set up SEO. I set up uh, social you know, auto posting, all that stuff, uh, and it, it worked really well. Such that, like, at the end of the, the semester for our final, we all presented our websites. He opened up Google, and it was like my website was number one. My Twitter account was number two. My uh, Facebook or whatever other account was, you know. So it was like, it was a wash. Like Drupal, everyone was super impressed and it. It was a great first experience to me to Drupal. Thank you, David. 
Uh, I'm Tessa, I'm an agency and community engineer at Pantheon, um, which means I also get to come to camps and talk to great people like you, uh, but that also means that I get to do training with agencies and developers to utilize our platform and become more efficient um, and work through those processes of, of being successful in Pantheon. Um, I actually started in Joomla, um, and then when freelancing in Joomla, ended up like taking on a WordPress project and, and starting to do that as well. So present day, I would call myself more of a WordPress developer, but Originally, the way that I got started is I was really obsessed with Guitar Hero. Anyone else really into Guitar Hero back in the day? Um, just me? <laughs> so I like loved Guitar Hero, and I was like, why is there not a system? At the time when Guitar Hero first came out, like you could play online um, with each other, but you couldn't actually like have any type of tournaments or like statistics behind that. And so I really wanted a site that would be like, hey, we played... I'm like better than this person, now I'm better than this person, now I'm better than this person, and it would like a hi have a hierarchy of um, you know, who was better at Guitar Hero. Uh, didn't know anything about PHP, didn't know anything about databases, all I knew was HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and decided I was going to try to dig into a random CMS and, and figure it out. Um, I think we were talking about this morning, and I think it might have been like .NET Nuke or something that I tried it, and I was like, nope, this is not working. Um, I really needed like user profiles and registration, and so I started in Joomla, um, got as far as I, I really needed to get, got someone else kind of involved who also loved Guitar Hero. He was a PHP developer, he helped like build out the, the hierarchy piece of it, and then the rest is history. Then I just started doing Joomla sites, and it all kind of just expanded from there. So, so then how did you get to WordPress? Uh, for, well, I got to WordPress because I was a freelancer. So when I was freelancing, so there's not a lot of Joomla developers out there, so I would get like random inquiries from like all these other like states like hey can you do this project and I was like sure and it just kind of like escalated and then eventually like ended up doing a WordPress project and was like this is pretty cool ended up in an agency doing WordPress sites and they did a couple Joomla but of course like Joomla is still a thing but I feel like it's less of a thing than WordPress is so it's just where I went so uh, CMS usage stats these numbers on your left uh, correlate to one of the CMS's on the right uh, can anyone take a guess what the 18,000 one is? 18 million. Or 18 million. Oh. Yeah. That's right. Um, what about uh, 2.1 million? Yes. See, I was actually like blown away by that. Uh, and Drupal being, being less so. So um, that's all I got there. Just yep. interesting stats. Yeah, it's interesting to see. Uh, just, I mean, e even in the context of. Uh, like how many uh, websites there are in, in WordPress versus Drupal. You know, the scale is, is totally different, uh, and that's, that's an interesting factor. Mm -hmm. Now, how many of those websites are actually good is a whole other story. Uh, so, like we kind of mentioned earlier, we're going to dig into the different features of a website in general and kind of talk about the comparisons, and after each uh, feature or kind of comparison, uh, that's when we're kind of going to ask you to either contribute, uh, like David said, please talk, contribute as we go, um, but then we'll ask you to vote if you have a strong opinion on, on one way or the other. And again, I'm going to please ask you to be kind to WordPress uh, and have an open mind. Yeah, and, and, and to be clear for the voting, we want it to be uh, like a clear winner. So if we ask, okay, vote for Drupal, vote for Word, you know, who votes, and it's about the same, neither neither gets a point. In fact, maybe we'll make a third column here that's like it's the washed. same. Yeah. And uh, we'll, we'll keep track of that too. All right, yeah. All right, so uh, user roles and restricted access. Um, so I will have to admit, like, WordPress is lacking in this area. Uh, we do have user roles, of course. It can be a contributor, an editor, whatever that looks like to actually add content. Uh, but if you had any features where you were saying, hey, we have this member database and members can only access this section of the site, uh, that would require a third-party plugin, which is pretty robust, uh, but it's definitely not a part of the core. Am I remembering right that... If, if you have subscribers to your website, do they get signed up as users? Or? So, yeah, if you decide to, like, when, you, when you're commenting, you can actually opt, depending on, like, what they have integrated, you can opt to, like, make them subscribers of the site. Mm -hmm. um, but subscribers can actually also create content. Really? So there's, like, users that are just, or no, subscribers are just regular users, and then contributors can create content. So you can, like, escalate, like, when someone registers for a site, like, what access level do they get? Um, so it, doesn't, it does sound like WordPress does have users and roles, even if they're very simple. They do, roles. but there's no way to say, like, hey, we have, like, 
this set of information and we want only these people to see this set of information. Mm. It's either like all or it's like admin or not, mm. like password protected or not. Sure. Yeah, so so as you guys probably know, Drupal does have some of that. Um, certainly Drupal has a extensive user uh, and role system like down to very, very specific things about what you can do with various modules that you install on your website. Um, when it comes to content, though, I mean, you, there is like content access module, you know, you add a module to get specific access to specific pages. Uh, or with just Drupal core, you could do access to a particular content type. Uh, so like an entire section, member only content, you could create as a content type. And then on the permissions page, say, restrict this to a particular role, and that's, that's built into core. But it still sounds like they're pretty similar in some ways. So can, um, so can users actually contribute content to Drupal like if they wanted to, like yeah, create yeah. an article or something? Yeah, totally. If you, if you have the permissions set up, you could create a role so that you know, people in this role can create content of particular types. Sure. So what about like, workflows? You know, I have a content creator, and I have a content improver, and a content publisher, mm -hmm. you know, and that whole process. You know, how does that play into all the I mean, Drupal uh, with workflow, our work workbench moderation and stuff in previous versions, and now in Drupal 8 core, there, there is a workflow process that you can set up that can be extremely granular down to, you know, I, I draft a post, I'm not allowed to publish it, but when I click save, it goes to my editor, they get a notification, they can review it and click save, it goes to a third person who reviews it, click save, and then it gets published, or they say nope, and it gets rejected back, or whatever, but that's, I, I haven't played with in Drupal 8 core, so I can't speak to how, how far that's come there. Yeah, uh, WordPress does have the same thing where you're like a contributor or you can be an author. Um, then you can also have like editor up to like an admin privilege. Um, but there is not like a workflow like beyond that. It's like you draft something and then an editor has to approve it. There's not like a, it goes from this person to this person to this person, not by default anyways. Anyone else have any other feedback? Questions? Well, in Drupal, also re restrict which fields on a piece of content with your permissions. Right. Um, they have anything like that? Um, I'm sure there's a plugin for that. There there's a plugin for everything. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's probably a plugin for that. Like the actual and we kind of get into it in a, a little bit, but the actual like um, custom fields for WordPress, like the core version of it isn't that robust. Um, so there's a really great plugin called Advanced Custom Fields. Um, that actually has a lot of like permission level things in it more than like WordPress core would but uh, when we're talking specifically about WordPress core it, I wouldn't necessarily say that would be something that would be available. Yeah? I would just say so uh, I think it's legit to, to compare a non-core things to because yeah. mm -hmm. For sure. you know, like, there are a lot of plugins, there are a lot of modules, uh, nobody uses Drupal by itself, nobody uses WordPress, well I mean like not yeah. It's real world to include plugins. So I think saying like, well, you can do it with a plugin. I think that's a legit answer. Sure. Yeah. It is a sweet plugin. Uh, I would say like probably one of the top used plugins by WordPress. I'm sure all of you have at least heard the name or something. Um, it's it is an awesome plugin, but. Yeah, and, and this is going to be something you're going to be seeing over and over. Like, we will say quite frequently, oh yeah, there's a plugin or there's a module that, that will do that because it's it's just the way it is. Did you have a question? Yeah, just to expound on that though, are we comparing free to free modules or paid to free modules? Uh, well, that's a whole other topic we're going to get into. Uh, we're just talking about like functionality. Like overall, if you had to rate this necessary feature um, on which one, which methodology you would prefer to use, uh, that's kind of like what we're looking for with with the voting piece of it, anyways. Yeah. So so feel free if you are a WordPress person, include all the paid modules you want. Yeah, totally. Cost is cost is not an issue for voting, anyways. I have one other question. Yeah. Um, so uh, I worry a lot about Active Directory integration or, or LDAP integrations. And not only that, but you know, importing LDAP roles and, and assigning roles based on their LDAP groups, not necessarily these users that I create inside Google or WordPress. So, uh, how, do they, how do they handle that? Well, Dr Drupal's able to handle that. There's a LDAP module, and I haven't dug into it, but I've seen it happen. Like, I know that you can do it. Uh, I, there's a number of LDAP modules. I just ported one to Drupal 8, and you can do all that. In yeah, I know Drupal 8 can, so I'm trying to get WordPress. Yeah. yeah, unfortunately, I actually don't have an answer for that one. I haven't had to do it. Um, I'm sure there's something, uh, but I don't know off the top of my head like what the best solution would be from any experience I have. <coughs> All right, so let's do a quick vote. Uh, now remember, yep. don't be a jerk. <laughs> I'm going to keep saying that. 
Uh, and only vote if you're like, yep, this is definitely the better better way to go. Right, so who thinks Drupal is way better in this case? Who thinks WordPress is way better in this case? Nobody? Uh, you guys are breaking my heart. Bias. No, I actually agree with this one. I do, I, that's one that, like, one of my complaints from WordPress is that I wish that they would, like, Joomla's is really great too, like, super robust, like, permissions. If, like, WordPress could get on that same page, it, it would be awesome. Okay. okay, I want to say something about that. I, yeah. I, I, I put it in, like, the same bucket, which we did not vote on. Um, and the reason for that is even if something is simpler, that doesn't mean it's worse. Sure, no, totally. So, I mean, there, there's less granular permissions, but uh, I've been using Drupal for 10 years, too. Sometimes I screw that up. <laughs> yeah. you know, so there's something to be said for simplicity. That's all. Yeah, of course. Like, I, and I think that's definitely something to consider too. It's like it's, re and we're gonna get to that. Like, it's all gonna be, it's all project based and, and client based, of course. But yeah, start this. Cool. And, and to be clear, for, for the, the same, like I'm, I'm reserving that for there is no clear majority among the voters. So if it's so if there's not, not clearly the one. Vote. No, there's no, no there's like, no voting for the same. There's no obvious winner. Yeah. Yes. I I don't know how many other people. Have fall into this category have experience with Drupal and I know what I can do there and my experience with WordPress is vicarious mm -hmm. by looking at what what I have heard other people talk about so I can't intelligently take and vote either either way right you have to do it based on our on discussion our information. Yeah. yes I understand this is not so we're not going to decide this, this and then go guys. out and destroy the one that's worse like we're not going to like <laughs> Have any uh, yeah wide-reaching implications? Yeah. This is more for fun. Yeah. All right. I'll let you leave. Yep. So so upgrades. Uh, who here has upgraded a website from six to seven or seven to eight, <laughs> eight to nine? Yeah, it's great, isn't it? <laughs> Not so much. Uh, it, it, it's it's a huge pain. Uh, historically, it's required. Uh, it, it's easier to do a migration from you know one to the other, like create a brand new Drupal seven site or Drupal eight site, and then migrate all the data in, than it is to do an actual like actual upgrade. Uh, hopefully that's getting better. I, uh, I haven't had a lot of experience doing it with Drupal 8, so I can't say if it's gotten better, but does anyone else have here have something to say about that? Migrating into Drupal 8? Not better. Not better? Not better. Well, okay. on the flip of that, who has had to update WordPress? And how long did it take you? Zero seconds, right? Like one click. Except uh, plugins break sometimes. Plugins do break sometimes. If you're using um, good plugins, they shouldn't break. Um, but you're going to have that issue no matter what. No matter what CMS you're using, modules can break, plugins can break, components can break. They're not all built for all latest versions. Um, but you don't have a migration process. It's not this overarching huge issue of like, oh, I have to bring this to the next version. It's a click of a button, and if you're going from like big versions to another version, you may have to upgrade your database. Big whoop, copy it, upgrade it, you're good to go. Um, so. It's really all I have to say. Yeah, I, I, I'm feeling like now we probably should have broken out these these topics because upgrades is one thing, contribution to core is a, a totally different yeah. thing, which we'll totally. we'll get into. Was there you a would have. So Drupal eight to nine is supposed to be a lot more promising. It's supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> so, so let's just break them out now. So let's vote on this piece and then okay. vote on that piece. <laughs> um, what are you voting for? <laughs> so if you had to vote. Which process would you rather go through? The Drupal process? Drupal process? Okay, how about the WordPress process? Yes! Thank you! <laughs> okay, so next. Uh, I do, yes. I actually, so let me, okay. let me just tell you guys this so that you don't think that I just love WordPress. Um, since joining Pantheon, like my Drupal experience was like 4.8 and I did some changes and I hated it. Um, so I, I like was like never doing Drupal again. Um, started at Pantheon and I was, you know, I'm going to conferences, I'm absorbing all this stuff, I'm helping agencies. And I went to Texas camp a couple weeks ago and I went to all the, like as many sessions as I could. I wasn't speaking, I wasn't at the booth, it was just like all sessions. And I actually posted on Twitter and you can find it, I might possibly like Drupal more than WordPress. So I want you to know that my heart can be in both places. Um, but I just know this is a Drupal audience. Matthew. I was just going to point out that with Drupal 9, the idea is that there, there wouldn't really be a migration at that point. It would just be, you have, if you've been upgrading all along, all along you, would, you would just basically change the number. Right. Like WordPress, right? Like it's just like click and upgrade sort of thing? or. 
I don't know how we're, I mean, I've, I've done the so, upgrades yeah. with the modules and I know that's easy, but in terms of Drupal core. Sure. Cool. Yeah, so, so great, upgrades. Uh, next, contribution to core. So in, in Drupal, I mean, we have, we have a sprint happening this, this uh, Sunday where anyone could come and start contributing to core. Uh, the process to get started can seem daunting, uh, but the, I feel like the barrier to entry is low from a, like, there's not some, you don't have to be, like, a particular person to contribute to core. You don't have to have certain credentials to contribute to core or be part of some special club, necessarily. Like, you can go out to the issue queue, find a problem, create a patch, and, you know, if it all checks out and it's, you know, valuable and all that stuff, it can get put into code, uh, in, into core, uh, and that's, that's it. So uh, the, the, the process can be uh, time consuming or, you know, like, like I said, if you can come to a sprint or like the DrupalCon sprints or uh, sprints here, you know, you can get some help with first time sprinting, which can help get over the bump of just kind of learning the, the Drupal lingo, but aside from that, uh, you, can, you can openly contribute. So does it, like if you create a patch, is it like you push your code or is it like a version control to like, you like, so, so the, the, like the core work? contributors can only are the only people who can actually commit, make the commit. So you just put out the patch, and then people discuss it and debate it for years, and then once they accept it, it gets <laughs> for years. Uh, so WordPress is slightly different. Uh, uh, at camps, we still have like I would say that at camps there's still some like sprinting. Um, I probably see it a little less than I do in Drupal. Uh, and I might be wrong on that, but just recently I feel like I've, I've seen it more in Drupal. At least more like open and friendly and Drupal. Um, we still want people to do it, but not every camp always offers it. Um, there is, so WordPress is still using SVN, um, but you can actually contribute your code to the repository. Uh, so you just you know pull all that down, make your code changes, and push them back up. Um, when there's an approval process, it, it, it's not as long, it sounds like, as not years for sure. Um, <laughs> but you know it, it could take a while as well. Um, I'd say the pain point there is SVN. Like, who wants to use SVN anymore? Not me. Well, who wants to make patches? A lot of people are intimidated by the fact that you can't do merge requests and pull requests. Yeah, that's true. I'd be curious about I think part of this process, which is like step zero, is setting up a, a local development environment. How different, how hard is it in WordPress? Is it a lot different for people, especially who have done both? Is it harder either way, or is it kind of the same level of pain? Like for contributing or for like or actually just up, working? Setting up a, a WordPress site on your laptop versus setting up a Drupal site on your laptop. Setting up a local development environment, are, are they much different? Um, well, I mean, I wouldn't imagine that they would be different. So like what my well, process... I'm saying like, like, are you needing to go in and, and change your memory limits and your page nope. memory limit and, you know, or like kind of default... Hey. I think they, yeah, no. they both run on the same yeah. stuff, the same stack. So what you do for one should work for the other one. Yeah, as I say, I, I'm not sure that they would be necessarily any different. That might be like a local environment thing. Like maybe you need to find a better tool. Um, like I, local by Flywheel um, has a really super great like WordPress local tool. You just install it, click I want a new WordPress site, and boom, it does everything for you. Um, there's all, I like MAMP Pro, and I don't see why like MAMP Pro couldn't be the same as Drupal. Where you just grab a database and oh yeah you can do it with Drupal. Yeah. Yeah. I think Calabox is another one where you can yeah, do both totally. of them. Yeah. Well, WordPress also has ServerPress, which is yes. Like yep. BBB. Yep. Yeah, BBB if you like Vagrant. WordPress Alex. doesn't handle uh, URLs very well though, so it can be a real pain in the ass uh, if you're local. Like, I don't know if those those local tools give you that, but WordPress is not exactly a professional tool. So it's not really built for people to use in that way. Normally, Are you trying to kill me? I think that breaks the nice rule. Right? Come on, Alex, don't be a jerk. You could move configuration once you set up all your URLs. I mean, in Provo, we have it, and I'm sure these other tools do the same thing. You have to tell it what URL that it thought that it was going to expect, or else it doesn't work. I mean, it's not, it's not built for that. And also, like, where you can store code is not always either. So it's it's not it's not really built it wasn't built to work locally in with lo built, working locally in mind, but there are plugins I bet that can help the CLI stuff certainly helps. I'm saying I I would completely argue with 
almost everything you're saying. Okay. Um, but you, there, it is correct that the URLs are stored in the database. That is, that's totally accurate. Um, WordPress, you know, originally was built for blogging. It wasn't like intended, maybe at that time, to become this like overarching CMS. So you know, on that piece of it, like I, you know, I would agree with that. Um, but there's like WPCLI, which is a command line tool, and you literally it's like search and replace, boom, URL, boom, URL, it's done. Um, so before WPCLI, it was kind of a pain point. Um, some awesome developer wrote a really great script uh, that's like search and replace. It just pops into your database, finds all of them, and then and then fixes them. Uh, it does serialize the data. So when you have a URL and you have it in there, if you just like go into like your SQL file and say find and replace and swap it out, um, if you have any serialized data that has that URL, so what that serialized data is is that there's like a character number that is associated with that URL. So if the character number changes then like being able to do that find and replace inside of the SQL file wouldn't work. Um, but there are lots of tools to put. So you're not disagreeing with what I said. It doesn't handle URLs well. Whether it doesn't, that, that part of it. Part of that, I meant the I professional part of it. I disagree with the, the, I disagree with professional, the professional. Yeah. I mean, no, most developers are not gonna think you should have absolute URLs in your database that you have to swap out using a SQL thing. That's kind of a little bit nutty, I think. Question? The question was, is it easy? It's easy to set up on a local environment. I got involved in that other end, and yes, it's a lot of fun if you're ready to roll. Yep. So, that, to answer that one, I don't know about that. I agree with you on all things, but it's the same about me. Like, if, yeah. if you can get one running, you can get the other. Yeah. yeah. The, one of the questions going through the upgrades and contribution to core is that uh, a good deal of WordPress's um, uh, environment is uh, with a lot of like, uh, demo and pro module development and so it seems like there's a lot more software licensing type stuff as opposed to quadruple where everything is basically open source unless you hire somebody to do something you pay for. And, um, okay. and so you get when you download a module you get all the features of that module. How does that affect people's the willingness to contribute to module development? I mean is it like if you if a company owns a module then you know they nobody's like people still contribute to it, or you know, or do they have to like be the ones that do all the development for it? And if they get behind, then that, that just doesn't make yeah, Can we so actually table that question? Okay. Yeah, we have a section coming up that talks about. Uh, we have quite a few different features um, that talks about like ecosystems and things like that. So okay. I think we, yeah, thank you. That's a super great question, though. R real quick, but last question. Just a quick one. Yeah. I think the answer to your question is it's easy to set up a local environment in either. Yeah. What, after years of Drupal development, when I just recently did my first WordPress site, I, I did everything locally. It was totally fun and way easier. But I just I was confused because with Drupal, I was used to being able to take my files, my database, and my my code and just put it on my server and just have it work. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then I, I just got really stuck at that point because I because of the URL. Yep, thing. exactly. So if you don't other, couple other There's like two places in the options table that if you don't have the right URL it's like nothing's happening. So I do agree with that piece of it. And cool. everything on Google said to migrate data, like export it as a file and then import it. Well, right. That is so, actually super easy to do, but I think that like if you're like building it for the first time, you should just do the database and replace. So yeah. we, 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 we have a lot of slides <laughs> left over, so we need to, we need to keep, on, <laughs> keep on moving. These are, this is great though. This is, yeah. We want this kind of interactivity for sure. <laughs> uh, we did not vote on upgrades to, uh, or to contributing to core, so um, I think the difference was like Drupal, it's fairly easy. You, you do a patch. might take a while to get it back. Uh, WordPress, similar. You have to use SVN. Um, probably get a response a little bit quicker. Who, who feels strongly about Drupal? Who feels strongly about WordPress? All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of one of those that are like in the wash. Does it right. really matter? Three-way tie. Good. <laughs> sure. Uh, so content display. Um, so in WordPress, we have pages. We have posts. Uh, custom post types came about a few versions ago. I couldn't even tell you the exact version, but um, so custom post types are a lot like content types in Drupal. Uh, we also have like the loop through content. So anytime you have a content, you literally just write this quick query and it'll loop through your content. You can display it however you want, uh, utilizing templates or, or whatever you'd like to, however you'd like to write that in your theme. Yep, and Drupal Core, as of Drupal 8, has, uh, you know, well, well, content types have been around for a, a long time. Custom fields, you know, add whatever you want. Uh, been around for a long time in, in Core, well, since Drupal 7 Core. 
And then uh, Drupal 8 introduced views in core, so now you can you know, set up as many content types and whatever, and then display the content dynamically using views however you want. Uh, I did hear, though, that there is a views plugin for WordPress, but I haven't used it. Yeah, there is. I've never used it either. Um, but yeah, so is it? I, I prefer the methodology of like doing a query, looping through my content, and then writing my templates that bring all that content in. Um, and, and then use, usually using like advanced custom fields because the custom fields inside of WordPress isn't really that robust. Um, but that plugin is ama like what, I said, amazing. What, so what I, things yeah. does advanced custom fields add? Uh, so advanced custom fields has like all of your whatever fields you can imagine, like field type, you know, text area, check boxes, whatever. Um, but what I really like about it is that it has like this thing called repeater. Um, so say that you have a client and you're like, hey, we want to make um, maybe we want like an event list um, or some other type of list of content, but right now we only have like two of them, but down the road there might be 20 of them or, or 50 of them or whatever. So you make the two, you set the fields for each repeater, and then they just can click like I want to create a new one and it includes all the fields that you specified. And then in your template you just say for each, dump up, this is the format for it. Hmm. So it's very similar to custom fields and views in, in Drupal. Um, and probably a little, like from what Again, I, I don't know like Drupal that well, but from what I was digging in recently, I actually like the, the advanced custom fields option a little bit more than Drupal's custom fields, but again, it's, it's additional plugins to add to WordPress. Sure, and, and when you say like the, you, you can write a query to show dynamic content, so yeah. would that be, I mean, it's, it's not a MySQL query, first of all, right? No, it's a PHP query of like, query, so it's a, a WordPress like query to like go through posts. So there's a, a kind of a string of text that's like, hey, what posts do you want? Like, how? What order do you want them mm -hmm. in? Like that kind of thing. And can you do that from the UI, or do you write custom code for that? You, there's probably a plugin to do it from the UI. I, I write custom code. Um, there might be a plugin for it. I'm like not in sure. a theme, sure. or yeah. So I put it in the theme. Okay. So when uh, building out the WordPress theme, like I just say. So if I have like, for example, if I want like an events list, like I just talked about, I create like a new template possibly, or maybe like a custom post type, or maybe I'm using advanced custom fields and it's going on a page. Um, and then in my theme, I would just specify like for this page, this is my query, this is what it should look like. So it's probably a, a little bit more coding maybe than Drupal, um, but it could be similar if you're writing custom templates for Drupal also. Yeah, I think uh, I've done uh, WordPress sites and, and Drupal sites and been using uh, custom fields. And one of the things that appeals to me, although I'm primarily a Drupal developer, it, one of the things Frustrating is just trying if you're especially if you're good at if you're good at PHP but you're not necessarily familiar with Drupal, getting to the level where you can hook into and change what gets output to the to the screen is is a little more obscure. It's it's robust and it's very powerful. But like if you wanna, you know, like the WordPress is sort of like a blank page and you just write out you know, like the query and then go through your loop and then it's like you've got all of the, the elements, all of the, the all of the, um, the, the classes that you want to add, mm -hmm. but it is code. And yeah. Like, so there's there's it's kind of like you just want to cut to the quick and write some code and not have to deal with the restrictions of the user interface, which is always going to be less flexible than writing out code. But it can be a little sloppy if you're not good at it. But yeah. So that I don't know. I think that's a good point because like I would not consider myself a PHP developer. Like I can write PHP for WordPress and I can write PHP for Joomla, but I can't. I don't think I could write PHP from scratch. Like, hey, create your own CMS, not without some like tutorials and advice. Um, but WordPress, it was super easy to just dive in and be like, oh, this is a query. That's easy. This makes sense. And then bringing all of this stuff in, it's mainly HTML and CSS or whatever you want your layout to look like. And then it's just snippets of PHP where you want those pieces to come in. Yeah. So whereas you're writing code for to move through in a template, you're doing that. Like that's happening in code, but you can configure it as a field. You know, you can use it as a field format, or you can configure a view mode, and you can reuse that in a number of different contexts. Mm -hmm. So like we configure a card uh, view mode, and so we can use that in our search results and in our you know browse the library. We can use it in a number of different contexts and views and and so I, I like the Drupal's uh, functionality of field formatters and being able to manage display and also like image styles and things like that. Like 
being able to have these reusable chunks and being able to configure things just so we can reuse that configuration in various places. Yeah, WordPress is the Agreed. same way though. So like we have the same template. So like if you created a post versus a page, there's a post template. Like if you had a list, then there's a, a template for like if you had just one individual post. And then same with a page, like and pages. What if you that post to appear in five different ways in five different places? What'd you say? What if you had a post and you wanted that same post to appear in five different ways in five different places? Yeah, so just depending on like where you have it, you can so uh, WordPress has like a, a hierarchy to its templates. So like it will look for like if it's a single post, it will look for like single dash, either like the post type or like what other custom slug you have associated with that, that post. Um, if that's not an existent, it'll look for like single.php and it'll render that. If there isn't a single.php, it'll render what's ever on index.php. So it has like a hierarchy and it goes down and starts from the top and comes down. Uh, so you can set that like dependent on like its post type or like where it's like located inside of your site, like whether it's. So like, can you control that though? As a yep. So yep. you can create your own five arbitrary things yep. and then define when they happen. Yep, exactly. But, uh, it, but it requires code. Yeah. This is, I mean, you're writing, you're usually like writing a little bit of code to make that happen. You're saying you can have five different post types with one thing. Uh, well, you, I mean, depending, like, give me an example, I guess. Like, so like but, a news article. Yeah, you've got a news article. And let's say you've got a news article, you've got um, a, a brief description of it, the actual body of the article, and a feature image. And on that, you write that one piece of content, and then you've got it displayed on a slider on the front page. Yep, you can do that. Uh, you've got it also displayed in a list of, you know, like a table of contents. You've got the actual article just detail yep. page. Like, so you're just writing it once, but it's appearing in different contexts and being displayed in different ways. Yep, so you could totally do that. So, like, okay. um, if you had, like, the post or whatever, you just say, like, okay, so when it's on this index page, then we're just pulling in posts. Um, and if you said, okay, I want this in a list, you'd have like a page template and then you just decide what that format looks like. And then you'd bring in the snippet. So you're like, I want the title. You just say like, get the title. I want the image, get the thumbnail. Um, so it's, I mean, you have to like write a little code, but it's super easy. So uh, it sounds like everybody in this room kind of understands views and how easy that is to use. But yeah. in WordPress, if it's WordPress, like how well known is this knowledge that you can custom code all of these things. Oh, right? uh, like super well, because every WordPress developer is doing it. I would guess, if you're a developer anyways. Yeah. When you say content display, are you including what in Drupal would be views module? Like the ability to, to, to display a list of content? Yes. I think so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just any type, so, you have any content and you want to put it somewhere. How is that done in WordPress? Like if you wanted a list? Right. So like what do you mean? Like, like, like a dynamic related, list. Related posts or, um, you know, uh, other posts with uh, taxonomy term. Yes, yeah, so same thing. You just, you'd have like your, so say that you had, let's say that you had a recipes page and you wanted to spell it off a bunch of recipes. You could have a page template that's for recipes and on that page template you could have the snippets in there that would be like bring in posts of this category or bring in posts of this taxonomy or whatever, however you sort so you of just that. have to write custom code yeah. for everything. So yeah, like but it's not say, difficult say, to do. show me a list of all of this other author's posts with this tag. Not really. I mean, there's some plugins that let you do that, but not. Um, I opt to like write, just write it out because it's easier to just write the query and grab the stuff that I want. Yeah, I, I've seen, I've, I've seen, and I, I've been suggested a, a number of plugins that can do it. But all of the developers and themers that I know that use WordPress full time just write it. Yeah, I just write it. It's to be honest, like I would rather not depend on someone else's plugin. We're we'll actually have it if we get there. We're going like <laughs> it's taking a long time. Um, if we get to the plugin one, um, I don't like depending on plugin developers uh, to do stuff. I'd rather write the code myself and know that like what I'm writing is going to work and it's going to be updatable and upgradable, and I don't have to depend on a plugin developer to keep that up to date. Right. I mean, the benefit in Drupal is right. Like you could add a field later and it'll be everywhere. You yep. don't have to go and redo yep. your in every spot. This is actually why I started liking Drupal. I was like, what? Views? All this stuff is like just a part of Drupal? Um, so I'm not arguing that. So like, that that's, that's a great, that's that's a great place to, to move things yeah. along and yes. vote. Uh, who, who thinks Drupal kind of wins in this section? I'm actually voting for Drupal. <laughs> All right. Who thinks WordPress wins in this section? I love writing the code for WordPress, but like the, the lack of coding would be nice sometimes. It just sounds like there's not really, like, we have this thing called Site Builder. Yeah. Like, WordPress, you're a PHP developer or you're a content creator. And those are the two things that you're, do, you're doing when you're interacting with WordPress. And it sounds like there's more that you can do by clicking around and putting the site together. The, um, for someone that is neither one of those things. I'm not a 
mm -hmm. So in, yeah. in the Drupal world, uh, we'll to get to this a little bit, like site builders are, can do a lot. Like they have a lot of power uh, and they do it like it, it's like the right way. It's not like the hacky way, to, um, depending on what you're trying to do. Whereas in WordPress, like if you don't know any code and you claim to build WordPress websites, you're, it's, not, it's just not, not what you're looking for. Yep. Okay, let's, let's keep yeah, on moving. We're going to yep. try to like yes. chuck through these. We still want your feedback, but we have a lot that we still want to talk about. So yep. um, uh, sharing in media. So this, what we're implying here is like how easy is it to put images, videos, things like that. Uh, WordPress, super easy. We have a, a media library which can hold PDFs, different kinds of files, images, videos. I mean, who puts videos on their site anyways, but you could do it. Um, and then inside of content, you can just import, a, import an image by clicking media and it, it's all good to go. And then um, videos, we actually have like what's called an O-embed API. So all you do is put the URL in and the video just embed, embeds and it's boom, awesome. Um, I think that's all I have for that one. Yeah, with, with Drupal, I mean, there's the media module. Uh, you know, there, there's like some good potential down the road and media module has really come a long way, but I, I feel like it still is painful to use. Um, I, I, I think uh, in, in the process for content creators, I, I think in Drupal you have to put a lot of thought into what that process looks like to get media on your website. Uh, there's a lot of planning you have to think about, like how is the media going to be displayed? What if they want to, you know, use it for this or that? Or you know, how? What if they want to reuse their content? Um, and whereas, for, from what I've seen in WordPress so far, it seems like that's just baked in. Yeah. WordPress so, seems very opinionated yeah. about these things. Yeah, there, I mean, there's plugins that you could get like outside of the norm of, of what WordPress does, but you don't need to because it, its media is pretty awesome the way it is. What about something that's like a, like a dam sort of thing, like a digital asset tool for managing your assets? Like like storing it at like AWS like kind of thing or like? No, I, uh, well, could be that. Uh, just like managing, like if you have a large WordPress site uh, yeah. and you're, you have lots of content creators and they're creating lots of imagery, or let's say that you're a school and you only want to use a certain set of approved images, Yep. right? Can you have like an image uh, like library for people to grab yep. stuff from that, that's sort of somewhat controlled? Yeah, so you definitely could. So the nice thing about WordPress is we have like this functions.php file, um, and out in the codex there's tons of different things that you can add to this functions file and it controls your theme. Uh, and everything inside of the WordPress admin is controlled with your theme, so when you switch themes those functionalities need to follow into your other themes. Um, but there is an option in there to take away like certain buttons. Uh, there's an option to like limit certain things. Um, and inside of that media, like a, if you're going, to, if you're having a lot of content, like there's an AWS plugin that'll just like upload all the media to AWS and pull it from there instead of posting it on your WordPress site. And then as well as the media, you could just upload what have privileges on that and like upload what you needed, and then that would be the only thing that was available. Matthew. I'm just curious, I work at a company where we work with some of the biggest media organizations in the world. Are, are there also like lots of big media companies that use WordPress that you know of? Um, of course, like I can't think of any off the top of my head, but I know yeah. they exist. Um, I, so, like so, the, isn't like the Boston, I can't remember. Um, I can't remember. I, Ars Technica is WordPress. Ars Technica. What? Uh, AMC. Well, like, well, but like all the Turner Broadcasting, all the NBC Universal, you know, lots of these big media organizations, when they needed a media site, I guess that you know they chose Drupal at some mm -hmm. point. So I don't know sure. if that's relevant here. But I, I yeah, think no. that's, I mean, that's a good, that's in, a good point. in that regards, I think that's a little different. Like then, yeah, this is like than, images than this. and videos versus like media. Yeah, this, what you were talking about, I think, is a little larger scale, which exemplifies some of the the pros of Drupal. All right, so we have like 15 minutes left, so we're going to try to like truck through these. Does anyone have like an obvious, like Drupal? Would Who they thinks Drupal wins in this case? And Drupal? Who thinks WordPress wins in this case? All right? And I, I swear, we didn't plan this out like in order, so it would go back and forth. It just, it just worked yeah, out that way. It did. I think we kind of talked about this, so we'll probably run through this pretty quickly. Yeah, we, I don't think... And we had we a conversation a about this, and we really don't feel like they're very different. Like WordPress, like we talked about, you can do page templates, you can loop through your content, you can spout it out however you want. It sounds like Drupal, you can have template, custom templates, uh, very similarly. You can do anything in either of them if you know enough PHP, yeah, I think. Yeah, true. Uh, does anyone want to add any, if they've worked with both, if they have any feedback on that? We were so worried that we weren't going to have enough context to, to like fill the hour and... Yeah. Can WordPress use Twig now, or is it still just PHP embedded with HTML and stuff? Um, 
So I don't know if it can necessarily use twig, but I've seen like themes that use like the Laravel like blade templating type of engine. Um, again, I don't know exactly of twig, but there's like other things like it's PHP. I don't see why you couldn't like somehow build a custom theme that would, you know, render twig as well. Yeah. 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 So there's like. Cool. Roots is like a. It's like a starter theme. It's like got kind of the bare bones of like how to get started and then customize it. I think we should extend building on this. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to cut to the chase and say they're the same, and I apologize if you disagree, but they're, they're so similar. <laughs> This is one we definitely want to talk about. Uh, this was yeah. a question that you had asked earlier about plugin uh, module. I'll let you lead with this one. Yeah, so uh, there, there are some pros and cons to Drupal's ecosystem of modules. Uh, so the, the, the process, uh, when it comes to choosing a module, uh, you, you go on Drupal, you do a search, and you'll have a few options. Typically, you know, for depending on what you want to do, uh, but you talk to your developer friend who's been doing Drupal for a while, and they'll tell you, no, use this module, and then you use that module, and you figure it out, and you, you get there. Um, and the process to like, well, I guess let, let's, let's let's start there. Okay. Selecting a module. Yeah. So um, WordPress has tons and tons and tons of plugins. Um, there are some really great ones. There are some commercial ones. There are some free ones. Um, this topic could probably go on for the remaining of the 13 minutes and then some. Um, I think that like the major differences would be that like like someone had mentioned like some of the plugins are commercial, um, and I'm not against that. Like if someone is building something that I find useful, I would like to contribute back to them. I don't think their time should be free. I don't think that they should have to spend a whole bunch of time on something and not get any reciprocation for that. Um, so. I'm totally comfortable with that, but in, in, in regards to so, Drupal doesn't have any paid modules for the most part. Like there, there might be some sites where you can buy modules or themes, but generally it's it's not exactly like socially okay. You know, people frown on it typically. Uh, you can disagree, but ex expand upon that a little bit. So like, uh, I know I've seen support. Like you know, you yeah. you, you can be a premium. You can get a, a a premium version of a plugin. And then you get support for it, like that's part of it. Does it also, can you like buy functionality? Like are, th are there things disabled that you get? Yeah. Oh yeah, totally. Okay. So um, the, a little ploy for a recent site that I built. Um, any women out there who are speakers, I just built a site, I built a site called outspokenwomen.io. Um, and it's, its intention is a directory of women speakers um, for like open source so that someone can say, hey, I really want some more female speakers at my camp. Where do I find them? Uh, so long story short, I had this idea like a month ago when I was like, oh, I just need to like make something happen. So I built a WordPress site and I bought a plugin I had never used before called Gravity View. Um, and Gravity View allows you to like display all the form submissions that you have. Um, I I put in my license number, which I paid for it. Um, when I put in my license number, it said it, it wasn't a valid license number. So I emailed support and got an email back in like 15 minutes. So it was like instant help. So yes, it might have costed money, um, but there's support for it. Uh, and there's definite plugins. Like I could have done, I don't remember what the add-on was, but I could have done another add-on for like another 50 bucks or whatever mm -hmm. for like another feature. So, but again, like if they're adding features to a plugin and they're putting the work into it, like they should get paid for it. Um, I do realize at the same time, like, if you're just looking for something, like there's just a module for it and it just works. There's no um, hundreds of plugins to go through to figure it out. Yeah, but, th but then the process of, you know, you, uh, if you need help with something in Drupal, you know, the module doesn't work, there's an error, you go in the issue queue and create an issue, you may or may not hear from the maintainer or someone else for a long time. Uh, and it sounds like with premium support, yep. you, you, is there a support option? Like, if, is there an issue queue with WordPress? Like, if you don't have um, well, yeah, I mean like the plugins have like their own issue queue. So like on the WordPress plugin repository for each plugin There's like an issues tab um, and people can post in there and I would say 90 Well, maybe not 90 a lot of the time um, The developers are pretty good about writing back in the issue queue um, on the repository because that's where they have it and to be honest like most plugins that are really robust eventually have a, a like a premium option at some point, and so having that good <coughs> reputation behind you is important. Um, but yeah. And then in, in regards to like getting a module or or plugin up, you know, and available for people to download. Yeah. Uh, so with Drupal, you have to go through a process to be like approved to post to the website. You, know, you could do like a sandbox, but um, the, you know the process. No, in, no, no, no more. No more sandbox. Oh, okay. Sweet. Yeah. 
Well, oh. for installation though, like if you can look at the picture behind you, I mean, the, I know the smileys are a little biased, uh, but inside of WordPress, you can click like add new plugin, search the repository right inside of WordPress and install it where Drupal, you have to actually go get the file and bring it in. As long as it's not a commercial plugin. True, right. as long as it's not a commercial Although, plugin. Don't they have a commercial like section or something now? Um, I don't think so like once you install it like you can updates from it because it'll it'll like bump to no, the I thought there was really like a like store built into the WordPress mm, list now not that but, I'm aware of okay, um, but like with WPCLI which is the command line tool uh, you can actually like store your plugins in a, a location and you could install it like from that location so you could say like plugin install and then give it the URL and it's like the same thing basically cool cool all right uh, who who's in favor of Drupal with the, their module ecosystem and installation process He's in favor of WordPress. Ooh. I think it's a draw. That is a draw. It's about the same. Yay. I think I, I suspect that our our uh, our sectioning is probably extremely like broken in, in regards to this. So some of you might be saying WordPress is better for one thing and Drupal is better for another thing. And I apologize. Again, this is meant to be sort of a fun uh, but, last minute thought. So But to be honest, like that's the point. Like WordPress might be better for some things and Drupal might be better for other things. Like there probably isn't going to be a clear winner. Yeah, security. Yeah, so um, this is one thing I probably in this area um, would have some hesitations picking WordPress, mainly because like there's so many vulnerabilities in plugins. If you're not getting plugins from dependable developers um, and you're just going to the repository and not watching reviews, not watching any issues or feedback, um, you can get a plugin that's going to have vulnerabilities and your, your site can get hacked. Um, but on that note, that's just bad developer at that point. Like, Find plugins that are good, find plugins that are from good developers, uh, stay on top of any of your updates. Uh, the nice thing with WordPress is that it is like updates. If there's a high security update, it will just push it right to your site and it's done, it's updated. Um, whereas, um, you know, there's lower risk securities and you can do that manually. But uh, I would also say like there's a higher market share. Um, so with that higher market share, that means that there's more hackers that like configure a WordPress because there's so many sites, so it's a bigger target. Uh, so why not learn WordPress if you have that bigger target versus and, Drupal? And there's more people who spun up a WordPress site once and haven't touched yeah, it in years, it or you know, so they're they're more likely to be hacked for that reason too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Drupal. I mean, hacks happen. You know, there's like the Drupal Geddon and, and stuff like that that has happened and has been really, yeah, been really really big problems. But uh, I, I feel like it's. The, the Drupal security team has really been a, a big pro for the Drupal community and that you know, staying on top of that and monitoring the contrib modules that have ended up in, uh, on the website. Um, and they've been making a lot of changes to Drupal.org and being clear about which modules are fault or the security team looks at, which ones are not being looked at, that kind of thing. Right. Yeah, that's nice. And if you're getting them all on Drupal.org, then you know everything that you're using, how much you yeah. Right. Does WordPress notify you when a vulnerability exists in a contrib plugin you're using? Um, if the contrib plugin is out of date? Uh, well, yes. Like, you'll have a big flashy notification. Um, but if it's like a high security, it'll just update it. There's no, no watches. Yeah, WordPress can push out updates yeah. on your site. Huh. Even, even to time, contrib yeah. plugins? I thought that was only for core. Yeah. Well, uh, contrib plugins, no. You'd have to watch that. Um, I would say that one thing that a note we, major note we have in here is like you should actually like depend on your hosting provider to really provide you the security here. Like um, your hosting provider can do a little bit more with security than your actual CMS from like that level. Like right, they're both going to have vulnerabilities, they both can have issues, um, but if you can have some second layer of protection. Yeah. So, so one of the, the issues with WordPress plugins is if it gets the plugin gets pulled because of security issues, then you, it, you don't get any updates or notifications or anything. It's just gone yep. from the WordPress plugin repository, hmm. and you have no way of knowing unless you're using some other tool to play them. And yeah, so you're you saying it still works on your site? Yeah. It yeah. Wow. It's just not in the repository. In you, that's the one thing is like as being, and one thing to be cautious of is like if you're a developer and you're using plugins, like staying on top of them. Like I remember Yoast SEO. Is anyone familiar with that plugin? Mm -hmm. A super great WordPress plugin had a really like major vulnerability like back in like 2014. I spent two days going through our uh, internal like CRM, figuring out who had Yoast installed and how, and going like back to all these sites and updating it because um, it, it was just like high security. So like yeah, with the other plugins, you're kind of at that that developer vulnerability. Um, so I think this kind of gets to the root of the difference between WordPress and Drupal. 
is that, I mean, if you look at Drupal from a developer standpoint, it's like, this is a textbook example of, um, of proper development. Like, you've got fifth normal form database development, you've got your model view controller completely separated, it's all very clean, it's all done the way that the computer science and philosophers say we should build a website. And WordPress is a bit more of a hack, but it does it matter? I don't know. I mean, that, I guess that gets the root of the question: is does it does it matter if you know if you're if you're sort of mixing your templates with your code and you're you know like if if uh, you know if it works? But it feels like when you build a framework that's built according to the pro forma development plan, it's harder to build something that's insecure. Yeah. I mean, I think that's I, mean, I think that's the idea behind. Make sense? I have no comments. Yeah. You hurt me a little in the beginning. I'm sorry. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I think, like, does anyone have, like, a strong opinion versus, like, I mean, Drupal versus WordPress? Or comment. I think Drupal's more the winner mm -hmm. here. Or yes. Comment. It doesn't happen very often, but bad fixes come out. Bad security fixes come out. Okay? I want to control what goes on my sites and my client sites. Yeah, totally. I don't want them automatically broken for me. And another observation on a lot of the Drupal security fixes, and probably the vast majority of them, and that they will come along with a statement, of, I'll call it a statement of impact, that says this exists, but only if the attacker has a particular privilege, right. usually an administrative privilege. I don't care about those because my sites are true. The people that have those privileges are trusted. They have no incentive. Yeah, the, yeah. the mitigations, right? Yeah. yeah. Mid mitigated by the fact that yes. blah, 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 blah. Exactly. So if there's you, like, yeah. I think there's like three or four features. It'd be super awesome if we could like cram it into like the last four minutes. Um, so uh, site speed. So this kind of plays into like one of the next ones as well is like, <laughs> How like quick can you actually spin up a site? And we both had a conversation about it's like, well, what's your scope of work? If you're just doing a brochure site, like sure, you can spin both of them up really quickly. Like which solution are you using? Um, but I feel for WordPress, like even that site that I just built, like it was, it's not that it's like super featureful, but I needed someone, I needed a way for someone to like fill out a form and then spout out the data. Um, and for me, I felt like- It just work. Yeah, and it just worked. Um, I, didn't, I don't have time to like build this beautiful custom site someday, but just not right now. Um, and it, it was just quick and easy, and, and it was uh, pretty easy to set up. Yeah, and, and I argue that like, you, if you have really simple scope, you could probably do that in Drupal too. You, know, you could you know, go grab a theme and you know, content types and do it. But why? Like, you, you, and you, if you have experience with Drupal, then just do it in Drupal, and that makes sense. Uh, if you have experience with WordPress, you're, you're going to do it in WordPress. But in most cases, like, you don't see many super simple Drupal sites. And I, I thought from it, like, why is that? And I, I don't know that I have the answer. And I, we don't have the time. Like, I don't want hands up. We don't have time to do that right now. Uh, but, it, but it's something to, to think about, you know? Yeah. But that also plays into this next one. Like, we'll kind of just put these together. Uh, mm -hmm. Is learning curve. Like, for me, I feel like when I tried to dig into Drupal, I was like, nope, done. I'm never touching this again. Like, this is horrible. Um, but WordPress, I picked it up and I was like, oh, this is cool. I can add content. Oh, look, there's this other like stuff. Oh, look at how easy it is to put this snippet of code in my template. Um, I felt like uh, WordPress was much easier to just like pick up and learn it and just run with it right away. Yeah, and, and I think, I don't know if this analogy works quite right, but uh, like with Pantheon, Pantheon is a great hosting provider because we're opinionated about how things should be done. And I feel like uh, Drupal is more powerful than WordPress uh, because you can do anything with it. You know, it's that analogy with the box of Legos where you can build whatever you want, uh, and they assume that you're going to do that. But that means the learning curve is just naturally much higher. Whereas you come into WordPress, it makes a lot of assumptions about what kind of website you're building and what tools you're going to need and stuff like that, and it, it's just pre-configured to be that way. Uh, I think that's a pro. Yeah, I think so too. I think that there's no like learning curve. There's obvious. I mean, yes. WordPress is easier, um, but I mean, would everyone agree WordPress is easier than Drupal to learning curve? Yeah. Okay. I think we'll skip like the documentation one because it's down to wash. Cool. We have like two more that I really want to talk about. So if you guys are willing to just hang out for a couple more minutes, yeah, uh, that'd be awesome. Is there a session after this? No, we're the last one. All right. Well, go go if you need to. Otherwise, we'll be here yeah. until they kick us off. Um, we have until six. Oh, awesome! <laughs> Woo! You guys, we can do this for all the yeah. Uh, so so camp, camps and conferences. So I, I've had the pleasure of, of now as of like 
uh, since December attending a few uh, WordCamp uh, WordCamps and like WordPress events. Uh, and my my per perspective so far, having spent several years going to Drupal events, is that Drupal events are very developer focused. I mean, Drupal in general is very developer focused. You know, the, the the talks are focused at developers and intended for people to get into development. Uh, the boffs, the like, the whole structure of everything is intended for like you are a developer and stuff. Yeah. I'd say WordPress is, like, has some of that. There's usually one developer track, um, but then there's something that's like beginners, and then there's stuff that's like content creators. Um, I would say that, that WordCamps are probably like 60% content creators and 40% developers. Yeah, but, and it, but it's different. Content on creators. We're yeah. not talking about site builders, we're talking no, about people creators, who blog. Yeah. Which, bloggers, like yeah. yeah. Um, there is, of course, like very like specified WordPress conferences that are you know more um, focused on dev. Um, but if you go to like your just regular like WordCamp or, your, or whatever camp, it's less. So. What happens if you put stickers on the elevator doors at Drupal events? <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep moving. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so I think the other thing that we wanted to bring up is uh, Word, WordPress also has a much higher percentage of women. Yeah, I, I, to be honest, that's actually true. Um, I would feel like when I go to WordPress events, I feel like there's more of me. Um, and when I go to Drupal events, I feel like there's less of me, um, which is okay, like I'm okay with that. Like you can't become a developer and not be okay with that. Um, but I think that, that that's changing, like and it, it's changing all around. Um, us women just need to do more to get more people in Drupal. Uh, but there's another piece of this too, is like the cost of like having a camp. Um, the one upside is that WordPress will give you money to have a camp. Um, they will start your first camp, they'll help you with your second, and they'll, they'll contribute to you actually building a camp. Um, they'll, they'll give you like a starting site, like you, know, yeah. you, don't, you don't have to worry about building your own site, they have it all kind of ready for you. Like they have a whole process to go through to be like, I'm interested in starting a camp. Let me go through my training documentation on starting a camp, and like they help you the whole way, yeah. uh, including like the idea of you know global sponsorship, where you have a sponsor that you know sponsors all of the camps nationwide, uh, and then you know that's where some of that money comes from. So as a like local camp organizer, you don't necessarily have to worry about finding a bunch of sponsors around to contribute like those big high value uh, sponsorships. Mm -hmm. You can just find like, hey, I know. Ten different companies that do something with, with WordPress, maybe they'll give me a little bit, you know, yeah. a little bit here and there. Which is too bad that Drupal doesn't do that because, in my opinion, I feel like it's easier to find WordPress sponsors than it is to find Drupal sponsors. Uh, it's easy to find agencies that have like one or two WordPress developers, and they're like, "Oh, we only do a little bit, but let's get our name out there." Where I feel like if you do Drupal development, like you do Drupal development, and that's like a big part of your business, and there's less agencies that are kind of correlated around that. Well, why are there so few sponsors? Other than the dictator part, and they can just kick you the out. The dictator part. Well, I mean, it's just, well, what else do you want to call it? I mean, like, they call it, it's, it's for better or worse, call it a benevolent dictator, because sure. he really controls the sponsorships. Like, you say that it's easier to sponsor, but it's actually much, much harder. No, I get, well, at a I local get, level, you, I, can, like, you can sponsor. But also, it's, yeah. it's just a little weird to have, if there are all of these agencies, why would you have an event where there's only like 10 sponsors? Yeah. That, that's their main event. It would seem like if there's all these people that it would be a lot easier to find to fill that out with. Sure. I mean, are they are those smaller? I've never been to a smaller WordCamp. Do those have more sponsors at them? Um, I think like WordCamp Minneapolis, for example, uh, I, like if we looked at the like versus Twin Cities Drupal, I think we have 11 sponsors, which we appreciate all of them. Uh, at WordCamp, I want to say we have all of our global global sponsors that contribute to all of them. Um, and if I had to guess, there's probably like additionally another ten. Uh, Drew, do you remember? Yeah, 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 there's about another ten. Similar. Yeah, so there's no, probably on the local level, on the local level, it's pretty similar. But yeah, there's probably about twenty total because we have global plus local. And I, I went to a, a small camp in Peoria, Illinois. It was the first time I'd ever they'd ever had a camp, and you know they had the global ones that were there. Like no one came from the sponsors, so they just kind of had thank yeah. you sponsors. Right. Uh, and then maybe five local, like local small shops that contributed. So yeah. it's. It was cool. Yeah, I'd say that, let's, let's keep going. I'd say that one's not a, a voting. Yeah. I think we should just, just keep voting. I think yeah. we should give you some applause. Yeah. Oh. All right. Thank you. Thank you. This is our last feature. So, like, if you just can hang, I mean, if you want to, hang out for a couple more minutes. We'll go through this, and then we have a fun little ending. Do we? Well, remember? Remember? Sorry, go ahead. Remember, like? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, so, <laughs> cost of building and developers. Uh, so the one thing that has to do with this is that WordPress developers 
tend to be a little bit less expensive, um, or I should say more that you can find more of them. Um, and depending on what you actually want, if you want a good developer, they'll probably be comparable to Drupal. Uh, if you don't care and you want a, I built a WordPress site, which meant I built a personal blog and I wrote no code, uh, I think there's a lot of those and it's, it can be sometimes hard to actually find a good one because there's so many that say they do it, like which ones can actually do it. Um, and then overall WordPress sites tend to take less time to build, uh, so they do end up being sometimes a little bit more reasonably priced uh, because it, it doesn't, it's not as detailed to build a site. Yeah, and you, you guys already know, Drupal sites are expensive to build. They, they take a lot of time to plan and kind of work through and build and anything custom, you know, all, all of that entire process. But, I mean, a, you still have to vet a, a Drupal developer, but I think on the whole, it's it's easier to find a Drupal developer that knows, you know, more yeah. than, you know, I don't know. If you find a Drupal developer, they're probably a Drupal developer. If you find a WordPress developer, they might be a blogger. <laughs> Why is it that the, I mean, that is a, I think that's a really important question for Drupal developers. Is why is it so much, how much, why does it take so much more time to build a Drupal site? Because that's a question that I often ask. Because it's not as good? No, I'm just kidding. I'm <laughs> no, totally I mean, kidding. It, totally kidding. I, I think we've, we've, we've touched on some of the points already. Like, yeah, I mean, Drupal really sites have. are inherently, usually, more complicated. You know, the, yeah, like, requirements for the yeah, yeah, like why well, use, yes, I mean, uh, why would you use Drupal for a super simple site? Like we right, talked about like the site speed. Right, no. yeah. That's why we're saying like it, there's, it has its place. Yeah, each of them yeah. has its own features that might be better or worse than the other one, but yeah. it's really completely up to what you already know and you're comfortable with. If I know Drupal, I do. I can probably <laughs> like make and build a blog in Drupal a lot faster than I can learn how to do a decent job in WordPress. And I can turn it over at a reasonable price. So, let me start. Yeah. 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 Do you think, um, <laughs> does that cost change over time? Like, um, we, like, things like, like writing custom queries that have to get rewritten or... Well, WordPress is really great about not change. I mean, every once in a while they'll change something like the Bootstrap Walker for like menus they changed one time. Well, and so but, broke but, site, I, I think like, he's saying more like if you if you add a new post type, you then have to might have to go through and update your code. You know, uh, well, he's talking about the queries, right? I would say like over time, if WordPress sites become more expensive, would be because of, you used a plugin that the plugin developer is not maintaining. So again, being at the liberty of the plugin developers. Where with Drupal, the modules are a little bit more stable. They don't get in the, they don't actually get into the, like the repository unless they're like vetted. Um, where with WordPress, if you don't know what you're doing, you can grab a random plugin and have no idea that two years down the road that whoever built it just gave up on it and isn't updating it anymore. So there might be security breaches because of that. And if that happens, then you have to find a new plugin and reconfigure the site. Um, from the Pantheon side, you see more support requests, you know, coming from from the WordPress yeah, side. Yeah, I don't work in support, so I don't know. Um, I don't know if there's actual stats behind that. Like Drupal versus WordPress. Yeah. I mean, there are people who would go, that, that, that is captured, but it's not yeah. ever served. It's like, ooh, watch out. <laughs> yeah. I think yes. it also is relevant that Dries keeps getting on stage and writing articles saying, we're giving up the blog market to WordPress. We're focused right, on yeah. enterprise, saying we only want these really big, complex websites. All these other little ones, you can have them. That's sure. essentially what he's been saying for mm -hmm. years now. Whether that's true or not is debatable, but that's, you know, he just said it again on stage at DrupalCon Baltimore two months ago. Yeah, totally. And I don't argue with that. Like, to be honest, if I had to build a super, super robust site with tons of content, I wouldn't want to do it in WordPress because like content organization is pretty brutal. Um, I would probably, well at this point since I have so much Joomla experience, I'd probably look at Joomla. Um, but knowing, getting to know more Drupal, you know, that would probably be something I would look at. And I can, I can totally admit that to you and not feel bad about it. Yeah, and I think ultimately, uh, I mean, that was supposed to be <laughs> there you go. Wasn't that fun? Uh, so. So, like I said before, I, I, we, it's it's whatever. It's a wash. I mean, we we were this expecting. Was not intentional, yeah, so this, this was an cool. intentional, and we it's all kind of fudged in the slides anyway. Yeah. But uh, but this is kind of what we had decided when we were talking about this. I mean, it depends on the type of site you want and your experience. Like, and, and there was a talk here last year by Tim uh, about Drupal versus WordPress and stuff. And and one of his conclusions that I, that I really like is, you know, if, if you do Drupal and you don't see any, you know, if you don't you have no interest or you don't see any value in WordPress, like. 
you don't need to switch gears. Like just keep keep doing what you're doing. And I, do what you, you do. You can you can build you know those things. And that's fine. And uh, it just depends on what you how you want to take it. I mean, you can do either one. So after this conversation, I decided I'm going back to Joomla. So you won't see me at any more Drupal events. I'm skipping all the WordPress events. Yeah. How many people in here have to use both WordPress and Drupal? Like that's one of the reasons I came because we increasingly have to yeah. do both. I mean, we have to. Anyone else? You guys, everybody? Would you guys like strongly disagree or, or like have any feedback based on what we've talked about? Yeah, I have one comment about yeah. that. Yep. Yeah. Um, so I wrote a blog post on this actually, but um, because I feel like Drupal is sort of losing in some ways to WordPress, but but I also think that there's this uh, obliviousness to the strength of hosted platforms like 